Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by BFS. My name is John Howard. I'm a property developer with 40 years experience and in that time I've bought and sold over 3,500 properties and I'm still going. I've got a reputation for taking on huge blocks of flats. Why do I love property? I love meeting people. I love doing deals. I'm a deal junkie. What do you need to be to be successful in the property industry? Well, you've got to back your own judgment. You've got to be sensible, brave, and above all, you need to know what you're going to do if the deal goes wrong. What I'm looking for today are some good deals. If they're not good deals, I won't be investing. My name's Simon Zucci. I'm an active property investor. And since 2003, I've been helping thousands of other people learn how to be successful investors to replace their income and build an alternative for the pension. The part of property I really excel at is finding people who've got a, a difficult property problem, helping them find a creative solution to come up with a win-win that works for everybody. What I love about property is two things. First of all, you can actually work once and get paid forever. That's if you retain the property. And secondly, you can actually use other people's money to invest in property. To be successful in property, I think you need to be very persistent. It's not easy, and sometimes people give up far too soon. In the pictures today, I want to find someone who's got a great attitude, who knows what they're doing, and isn't afraid to put in some time and effort to get some great results. My name is Nicholas Woolwork. I'm an investor, developer, author, and owner of PropertyForum.com. My expertise is in property development, and in particular, micro studios. I love property because it creates a passive income. It's a great way of generating wealth and freedom. I think to become successful, you need to be flexible and creative and work with lots of different people. The qualities I'm looking for today are an entrepreneur that's driven, someone that's creative and able to overcome problems when they arise. I'm Michelle Nizio and I own and manage five property and finance related businesses and I'm also a property investor. In property, the thing that I excel at the most is finding those hidden gem property investments for my portfolio landlords. To be successful in the property industry, you need to be completely fearless. Just go for it and don't hold back. What I'm looking for today is somebody who thinks big, who's got passion for the industry. If the project isn't exciting, then I won't be investing. My name is Sandeep Puri. I'm a property investor. Part of the property industry I excel at the most is finding deals and uh, doing the background checks to make sure they work very well. The property industry is always evolving, which makes it a very dynamic place to be, and that's the bit that I enjoy the most and I excel at. From the pictures today, I'm looking for something that's very different, uh, interesting, and the people behind it have actually carried out a lot of due diligence to make sure their numbers work. My name is Geraldine Curran and I come from Tyler's Green. Hi, my name's Renault Labouchardier and I'm up today from Bournemouth. Hi, my name is Andrew M. Bott and I was born a few miles just from here. But if you listen to my exotic accent, you wouldn't think so. I've actually spent the last 20 years living in Asia, so this accent is actually Chinglish. Right now, I'm living here in Cambridge. Well, I bought my first property when I was 18. Um, and since then we've bought various other properties. We also inherited a property as well. Um, a lot of the time we've flipped them, we've done them up and sold them. Um, but now I'm looking at having a possible income. Uh, historically my experience in property is I was a property developer up until 2008 and prior to that I was a mortgage broker for about 12 years as well. I've been full time in property now for three full years and I've already signed three multi-million pound deals. I'd say that my level of experience in the property industry is more or less a bit beginner, although I've kind of dabbled. So my aspirations are, or the business model, is to uh, buy residential properties, extend them, convert them, refurbish them into HMOs, fill them up with rent paying guests, and sell them to um, professional landlords or people who want that income stream. And my aspirations within this industry is to not be pigeonholed, to actually really want to look at all different things that is setting up a portfolio, that is flipping properties, that is even looking at starting new builds. So I don't think that I should be pushed into one particular area. I want to be able to just literally see where it takes me. Well, my long-term aspirations in property is to provide a heritage fund for my family. As we all know, our salaries are getting smaller and smaller and smaller over time. So I'd like to build a heritage fund for 
my family, my investors and partners. The project I'm looking to pitch today is a property that's been lived in by one old lady for 30 odd years. So as you can imagine, it needs some serious refurbishment. Uh, it can be purchased for 360,000 and the refurbishment is gonna cost between 100 and 120,000. And then once it's done, it will generate an income of in excess of 80,000 a year. Meaning that the value, well, what it should sell for should be around 750 to 800,000. So I predict the profit will be around 220 to 270,000 pounds gross. So my pitch today is going to be based around a four bed HMO. Um, it's the, the one that I've actually got the deal on is really in quite a, a bit of a bad state. And I want to kind of bring it up um, so that young professionals will want to live there. At the moment it does have students and they'll obviously be finishing their term and going in the summer. But if I can get get this one in the bag, then what we can do with it is make it look beautiful so that when you see the photographs, as a young professional, you'll want to live there. It's in the town, right five minutes from town. It's right near the station. What more could you want other than a decent place to live, which I generally believe there is a real lack of them at the moment. So let's bring up accommodation. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm here today to pitch this great project that I've found right here in London. It's an end of terrace house that is ideal to be converted into three apartments. At the moment, the planning says no, but I know there'll be a change of the law soon, so we'll be able to convert it to the three apartments. If the property angels join me with this high return and safe investment with this property right here in central London, they'll make a fabulous return. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by BFS. My name is John Howard and I've been investing and developing properties for over 40 years. In that time I've been a very successful but of course I've always made the odd mistake as well. In my book I explain how to be successful and what to do should something go wrong. I've survived three property recessions. I can help you do the same. My book is available online. Please go to johnhowardpropertyexpert.co.uk. Make your property finance easy with Bridging Finance Solutions. Our ethos is make it happen, and that's exactly what we do. We have many clients, from experienced property investors, developers and landlords, right through to people purchasing their very first investment property at auction. Bridging Finance Solutions is a principal lender, which means we have the freedom and flexibility to make immediate lending decisions. We bring years of experience with hundreds of satisfied clients. So if you're looking for fast finance from real people with a common sense approach, contact us today. Hello, my name's Simon Zucci. I'm the author of Property Magic, which you can buy on Amazon for $12.99 or indeed get on Audible if you prefer listening to books. Now I started investing in property in 1995 and I became financially independent by the age of 32. But I made a huge number of mistakes because I learned the hard way. You don't have to do that. I've explained in this book how you can make a huge amount of money investing in property when you know how to do it. And one of the secrets is working with motivated sellers. People for whom the speed and certainty of the sale is more important than the amount of money they get. And we look to find people who've got a problem and come up with an ethical win-win solution. I explain exactly how you do it in here. It's a bestseller. You can buy it online, as I said. However, you can get a complimentary copy. All you have to do is phone the number below or go to the website. I ask you just to pay for the postage, tell us where you want to send it in the UK and we'll send it completely free of charge to you. Call us right now and we'll send a book to you straight away. Learn how to invest with knowledge, invest with skill. Investing in property and building a portfolio can be easy with the right support and service. From property sourcing to selection and financing through to refurbishment, vetting and letting. Michelle Nizial's bespoke property investment service does all the hard work so you don't have to. Let Michelle take care of all the headaches while you relax and earn stress-free profit. Contact her now to find out how easy it really can be. I'm Nicholas Woolwork, businessman, investor, real estate developer and entrepreneur. In my book, Investing in International Real Estate for Dummies, 
I teach you specialist strategies you can use to build wealth and create an income through property and real estate investing anywhere in the world. I can steer you away from the common pitfalls and help you choose which investment strategy is right for you. This book will tell you all you need to know to grow a profitable real estate portfolio. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by BFS. Renault, delighted to meet you. Please tell us what you have. My full name is uh, Renault Labouchardier. Great I'm name. Up today from, <laughs> thank you. I'm up today from Bournemouth and I'm a general manager for a room rentals company and also general manager for a construction company. And the business model is basically to buy residential properties, extend them, convert them, refurbish them into HMOs, fill them up with rent paying guests, and then sell them to property investors or professional landlords. We've done three of these so far. The fourth one is just coming to a conclusion now, and it will be going on the market in May. But the one I'm offering you is a 12 bed guest house. It's got registered use as a guest house, but it was lived in by an old lady on her own for about 30 years. So as you can imagine, it needs some refurbishment. The purchase price for it is 360,000, and the refurbishment costs are estimated about 120,000. Once it's done, the rental income will be in excess of 80,000 a year. So by my reckoning, it should go on the market for about 750, 800,000, and I think that's going to generate an, a, a profit of between 220 and 270,000. There are further projects that we are waiting for planning on. I'm hoping for an investor who will work with us, not just on this project, but on future projects as well. And I'd welcome any questions you've got. Okay, well that's a, that's a great pitch, Renault. Um, and interestingly, HMOs are not something I normally invest in, but the size of this makes me interested. But let's start ladies first. Michelle. Welcome. Thanks, John. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Renault, for coming in and pitching. Um, the estimated end value seems pretty high. Um, have you, who have you gone to to get an estimated uh, valuation? Uh, Gosby's have told me between 10 and 12 times the yearly income. Um, but the rents we charge are basically all inclusive. So the, the, the customer doesn't pay the bills, we pay the bills. So therefore I've allowed for five to seven grand a year for bills. Um, and then done the 10 times income multiple, and that's where I get the 750 from. The second and third project that we sold were both six, six bedroom units, um, and they sold for 460 and 475 respectively to a housing association in Bournemouth. Okay, um, and with the 12 bedroom guest house, so are all of those bedrooms going to be en suite? No, four will be en suite, and eight will share two bathrooms and two kitchens. I think that's quite a high number of users per bathroom, four people to bathroom? It's within the HMO requirements of the local council. It's um, four rooms per bathroom, uh, four rooms per kitchen. And maybe you're within the regulations, but how easy is it to rent out to people when many people want en suites these days? But there is also demand for cheaper rooms, particularly from certain contingents, uh, Eastern European, Polish in particular, who are basically just here in Bournemouth to work send money home. A lot of them are buying plots of land and building their own homes back in Poland. No, I know, I know that's true because um, some of the people who've worked on quite large site homes at the moment are Polish and, and, and they save all their money. Yeah. Great workers save all the money and then and they're building something else when they get, you know, when they get back home. Okay, Nicholas, what do you think of this? What's the planning on it? I'm quite interested in the planning element because with HMOs, guest houses, I know Bournemouth are very um, difficult to work with, shall I say, on changing guest house use back to any sort of residential. They rely heavily on um, As a guest tourism. house, because of the um, demographic of customers and because of the location, the majority of the customers the room rentals business will have for that property will be people who are staying three or four months. But what a lot of hotels are doing in Bournemouth at the moment is applying for dual use. So during the summer they're hotel and guest house and during the winter they can be a HMO. Okay, and is that your plan to do the dual use? Uh, that would be the plan if it becomes necessary to take people for longer than four months. But we're geared up for, for the people who are coming here for the language courses, they're, they're working there part time, 
and full time and sending money home. So, a couple of questions um, regarding the rental income. You've obviously based it on 12 rooms, but as you said, the rooms are of different sizes and have. Uh, uh, different uh, amenities, yes. Different amenities. So what is the standard price of a room in, in Bournemouth and what are you oh, charging? In, within that property, the cheapest room is going to be about £100 per week. Okay, and the most expensive? And the most expensive is going to be about £200 per week for a couple, all inclusive. And have you um, put any void periods into your calculations? Not as yet, no. I um, mean, our occupancy for the 250 rooms that we manage already is about 98%. We ask our customers to give us three weeks' notice whenever they're going to leave and we do viewings and we try to fill the room up within a day or two of them leaving. We also ask them if they can find someone to fill the room for them, for us, then we will pay them an introduction fee of £50. But they're not tied into that three week? That's just a honorary three week notice yes, period? Yes, we ask them, yes. We used to call them bed sits in our day when I was doing them years and years ago. But if there was a problem with the planning, of course, we just offered them a continental breakfast and that got us round the rules of being a, 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 um, you know, a guest house against a... Correct. Yeah. We, we can be a room-only guest house. Right, yeah. Or we can offer them a continental okay. breakfast. So you've got that covered, really, haven't you, really? So is that, are you under, you're staying under the C1 planning yeah. category? Is that what you're hoping to do? Yes, but we are going to apply for the HMO uses as a, as a dual usage. So we're not going to lose the guest house. Thank you. I mean, I don't know about you, Michelle, but I mean, you've done, I mean, you do HMOs now, don't yeah. you? And I haven't done them for years. Um, what are your, you know, what's your view on that? Because I'm um, a bit lost with it, to be honest with you. I've never dealt with a guest house before. I don't I think mean, that's a problem. I think that the 98% um, occupancy rate that they deal with, I ambitious. would want it, yeah, I think that's very ambitious. We actually did something very similar in, in Watford. We yeah. took a guest house, ran it as a sort of sui, yeah. not sui generis, but a little bit HMO, a little bit short let to keep it under the C1 yeah. planning. Um, yeah. It's a grey area that you can operate in, but my concern is that planning is that grey area. I don't actually like well, grey areas. I want, I want to know 100%. Offer them a breakfast and you're going to be fine, aren't you? So what was the occupancy rate on your um, deal then that you... <sighs> well, not in Watford, I'm going back, it was a couple of years ago we sold it, but certainly not 98%. Yeah. That's and, in the centre of and Watford. Also, surely, so. surely sort of 30, 40% of the gross is taken by the gross income is taken is taken mm. by expenses, isn't it? Absolutely, it's paying it. all the bills. It's paying all know. the bills. Uh, I also think that that end valuation is extremely high. Yeah, so that's not an HMO end valuation. That's no, a guest house end valuation. Not. I think it'd be quite hard to sell that on actually because of the amount. Yeah. If you look at the size the, of it, the, the cash flow is going to be about three k a month after you pay all the bills and everything. I reckon yeah. about thirty six a year maybe. Yeah. yeah. And then you're going to have to put 300 grand in what you deposit and your buying costs. It's not a great return investment for an HMO. I wouldn't buy that. So what do we think it's worth? See, I'm not 100% like? sure on the actual rentals as well yeah. for, for an area. I mean, uh, 200 pounds a week for a room, albeit a very nice room, is yeah. very high. Um, it is Bournemouth. It is Bournemouth, but uh, Which is very nice. peak, peak, yeah. peak months you might get that. Precisely, yeah. but yeah. You're middle of nice Christmas area. and I think yeah. with no void periods built in, no yeah. Yeah. allowances for extra monies being spent, I do think um, yeah. I agree with yourself. But I mean, I, I like him. I like yeah. him. I think yeah. he's, he's a, a good very guy. He's confident picture. He's confident picture and he, he, you know, he's, I, in, I was, he's in the building industry, which is good. I was actually sitting here thinking, I don't understand his model because he's buying, he's doing it up. He could refinance, say, get all the money out and hold on to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not all like you, Sam. Some of us want to turn and make a profit and actually have oh, some, in yeah, have some but, income, but pay some school fees and things like that. You know, it, it make a lot more money long term holding it. Yeah. That's well, where we differ, obviously. Yeah. That, I would have to agree with Simon. If it's, yeah. Well, oh, that's why you're sitting next to him then. Clearly. So, so <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it just you? How about you, Nick? Would you hold, would you hold on to it? I think it's a holder. Yeah, what do you More than anything, because yeah, so I don't think you'd sell it. Then, I think you'd really struggle clear. selling that hybrid model. Well, if, surely, if, yeah. are, if you think you can't, if you yeah. think you have to hold it and you can't sell it, there's no point doing no. it in the first no. place. So I, don't, yeah. I don't think the end valuation stacks up, no. yeah. but um, so I do what do we think, think? We'd if the income's right, if the income he's saying is right, and we think there's 35% uh, coming off it for costs, if that's what we all think, what is it worth to sell on to someone else? What yield? 15% yield? A minimum 15 to do an HMO. Yeah, okay. Not ideally 20. So well, okay. that's quite high. <laughs> right, 20%, I might even yeah. get back into it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should be doing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not an investable uh, project for me. No, I, I'd recommend he just does it, refinance and holds onto it. Yeah. He's got all the abilities of rent it out. I mean, gets yeah. all his money back. The, the, the issue is the resale of, of that grey area. Is well, it let's a find C1? out. Is I it mean, an HMO? What is it? Yeah. The council get a bit 
difficult with I these things. They'll see problem. people doing you're this. You're a typical bank manager. That's why you're called well, the bank manager. The councils because have quite a lot of power. At the end of the day, <laughs> the of the day surely, if it's guest house now, and it's got all the fire eggs for the guest house and everything else, and you give them a continental breakfast, of what we used to do years and years ago, it's, a, it's bed and breakfast. It's not that simple, because they will knock on the door yeah. and ask the tenants, how long have yeah. you stayed here? They'll say yeah. more than three mm. months. They've got an AST yeah. role and the license to be there. And then they'll say, right, you've got okay. residential here, you've just so, breached your planning. Okay. So that's a bit, I'm being so a They bit will knock home. on the door, that's the problem. So that's, that's, quite, that's, quite, that's quite high I th risk. I think, you know, yeah. we've had doors knocked on before yeah. in, the, in the Watford one. We worked with the council, they were comfortable with yeah. what we were doing, because we were making sure the lets were shorter term. Okay. But there's a risk for breaching here in, in lots of areas, and I think that makes it tricky to finance as well. I think this 10 times income is a problem. We all agree with that. Yeah. Uh, we need to base it more on an HMO model, which is definitely much, HMO. much it's got less a bit, than yeah. that. And um, you're good at figures, so we'll leave that with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think there's a, there's a few too many problems. Yeah. As you say, if he comes okay. back with rock-solid planning, oh, yeah. one other final thing which we haven't considered is VAT. If you're running a short-term business, yeah, v needs... VAT kicks in on the shorter lets. Well, I would You've got say some issues there that's going to eat into his yeah. margin on the I short lets. I think he needs to come stuff. back with planning permission, subject to planning permission for the whole thing. Okay, good. Excellent. <laughs> Renault, uh, just remind me uh, of the, what you're looking for us, from us. I'm looking for 100% uh, funding on this particular project. And what are you offering us? I was hoping you guys would... Um, Say to me what you're prepared to... Well, no, we can't be the buyer and the seller. So you need to say what you want, and then we'll tell you whether we think it's... 40% of the net profit. I think it's a very ambitious project that you're looking at, and you're, you're almost asking someone to be half in the hotel business and half in the HMO business. Um, and both sectors come with an awful amount of legislation that you're going to have to uh, know. It's not something that um, I'm massively familiar with, with the um, guest house, so it's, it's not something that I would like to invest in. So, But thank you for coming, and I think you're actually very investable. I agree. Ambitious project. Um, I do have quite a lot of experience in HMOs and some in guest houses as well. So just to clarify, you're looking to use it half and half? Um, it will be used as a guest house primarily, but we will be applying for dual usage as a HMO. See, I, on that basis, uh, I'm not going to invest. Uh, if it was just an HMO, uh, I could see some value there. And I, I personally think it'd be better to actually hold on to it, refinance and hold it. But I guess that's not what we're looking for. So I'm open I'm, to options. But, yeah. If the model was a bit more proven, and if you could show me three of these that you've done that works, that you've got planning on, you've got the council on board, you've got the numbers, I'd be very interested because there is... Nick, to be fair, he has got it. He's uh, done two. We've three. done three. Yeah. Okay, three. and those have the planning We've done described. three that were sold. With and the, the fourth one, the dual use. Well, there are two boroughs. There's the borough pool, and in pool, if it's six units or less, two stories or less, you don't need planning permission, and you don't need a HMO license. It's a non-licensable HMO. In Bournemouth, they've implemented Article Four, and basically you've got to comply with that. So it's much harder to get the HMO. Exactly. In that's that's what yeah. I'm saying. Is and my, so my concern was leading on yeah. to that planning aspect. So Sandy? I won't be investing for that reason mainly. Um, I think the rental amounts are slightly lower uh, coming in when you take into account void periods, uh, which then results in the overall value being slightly less, um, and for that reason I'm out. My, my advice to you, it's not for me today, but my advice to you is if you could have bought it subject to planning permission and brought it to us on that basis, I think you'd have had uh, a backer today. But on... Uh, as it is now, I'm afraid I can't invest. OK, thank you. All right, thank you very much thank for coming. You. I'm a little bit disappointed with how it went. Um, I was hoping they would have been prepared to take a risk, but I understand that with the dual usage of a guest house and a HMO, that it was one that they weren't um, prepared to take on. So in summary, it's not all over. Um, I will be looking to come up, and if there's an opportunity, I'll present one of the other deals we've got. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by BFS. My name is John Howard and I've been investing and developing properties for over 40 years. In that time I've been a very successful but of course I've always made the odd mistake as well. In my book I explain how to be successful and what to do should something go wrong. I've survived three property recessions, I can help you do the same.
My book is available online. Please go to johnhowardpropertyexpert.co.uk. Make your property finance easy with Bridging Finance Solutions. Our ethos is make it happen, and that's exactly what we do. We have many clients, from experienced property investors, developers and landlords, right through to people purchasing their very first investment property at auction. Bridging Finance Solutions is a principal lender, which means we have the freedom and flexibility to make immediate lending decisions. We bring years of experience with hundreds of satisfied clients. So if you're looking for fast finance from real people with a common sense approach, contact us today. Hello, my name's Simon Zucci. I'm the author of Property Magic, which you can buy on Amazon for $12.99 or indeed get on Audible if you prefer listening to books. Now I started investing in property in 1995 and I became financially independent by the age of 32. But I made a huge number of mistakes because I learned the hard way. You don't have to do that. I've explained in this book how you can make a huge amount of money investing in property when you know how to do it. And one of the secrets is working with motivated sellers, people for whom the speed and certainty of the sale is more important than the amount of money they get. And we look to find people who've got a problem and come up with an ethical win-win solution. I explain exactly how you do it in here. It's a bestseller. You could buy it online, as I said. However, you can get a complimentary copy. All you have to do is phone the number below or go to the website. I ask you just to pay for the postage, tell us where you want to send it in the UK and we'll send it completely free of charge to you. Call us right now and we'll send a book to you straight away. Learn how to invest with knowledge, invest with skill. Investing in property and building a portfolio can be easy with the right support and service. From property sourcing to selection and financing through to refurbishment, vetting and letting. Michelle Nizial's Bespoke Property Investment Service does all the hard work so you don't have to. Let Michelle take care of all the headaches while you relax and earn stress-free profit. Contact her now to find out how easy it really can be. I'm Nicholas Woolwork, businessman, investor, real estate developer and entrepreneur. In my book, Investing in International Real Estate for Dummies, I teach you specialist strategies you can use to build wealth and create an income through property and real estate investing anywhere in the world. I can steer you away from the common pitfalls and help you choose which investment strategy is right for you. This book will tell you all you need to know to grow a profitable real estate portfolio. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by BFS. Geraldine, welcome. Hello. Thank you very much for coming today. And thank you for the very detailed analysis you've given us, which ladies tend to do and men not, tend not to do, which is interesting. Um, tell us about the deal you have on offer today for us, please. It's a HMO, it's currently running as a HMO, um, and it really does need to be brought up to start scratch. It's really not in a good state of repairs. The actual place that it is, is right close to the, the town centre, so you can actually walk into the town centre. Equally, it's got really good facilities of train facilities even to get into London, so it's probably about a 30 minute train ride into London. What I would really like to do to it is actually bring it up to date, put some professional people in there, and make it a really nice professional property. Okay, so tell me some of the figures. I managed to actually secure it for 255. Yep. It's looking at, I had three uh, estate agents look at it, and they sort of said if you really do it up and you, you can probably get 325 for it. Which yeah. town are we talking about? How I Wickham. Well, you're, you're lucky today because you've got probably three HMO experts on, on the panel here. Excellent. Uh, I'm not one of them. But <laughs> so he keeps reminding us, but wants to get back into but, them. But I'm starting to get tempted yeah. back after yeah. 30, yeah. after 35 years. Being so um, hammered with all the HMO deals. Exactly. So um, Michelle, what, yeah. what what are your thoughts? Hi Geraldine, what investment do you want? I would like 100% investment if that's possible. Okay. Um, and I'm actually looking to give 50%. And what I'd ideally like it to uh, give an income. So that's a starting block for me. I have done um, various property investments before. Um, I kind of, my first property that I bought was when I was 18 and I actually did it under a shared ownership scheme. 
So is this your main job? Yes, it yeah, is. You don't, you don't work anywhere else? I, um, I have a company called The Food Nutritionist. That's what I've always run. I've been running that for about the last 10 years. But slowly, I found that it wasn't going to bring me in the income that I required. And so I'm moving over more into property. I thought, it was basically me saying, right, what else can I do? And this was really what sung to me. So, so yeah. Come and join us. It's a great community. Great no, community. I absolutely love it. I don't think there's enough females in it. Well, I think you're absolutely... <laughs> I, you know what? I agree entirely with that. And when we go to these drinks do's and there's hardly any ladies there, yeah. I, I'm disappointed. So just going over your refurb costs, though, uh, what, what, what are those roughly? Roughly about 30,000. So what I did was I got um, a few builders round. To make it more appealing, there's a few of the old where the chimney breasts were. And I thought it would be beneficial just to take those out. That way, when you walk into the room, you've got lots yeah, more room. Chimney breasts are expensive to take out, having said that. The quote I roughly looked at about um, about a thousand pound. Okay. What, what, what's it rented out for now? About three sixty a room. So does the five fifty include bills? Yes, it includes bills. You mentioned the area lending itself to HMOs. I think because there are certain pockets in High Wycombe, where it. With the stu there is a student vibe there. There's also um, the hospitals also there, and these some of these houses are quite large, quite big, and they just lend itself to it. And most fa in those areas, like for instance, this is actually on quite a busy road, so you find a lot of families don't necessarily want to live there. Have you thought about um, using uh, leverage or bank finance to buy the property in the first instance? What you're asking at the moment is for three hundred grand. Yeah. Uh, and the return is, you're saying it's worth 325, so 300 grand invested for 25 grand return, which then has to be shared. Yeah. So you want me to give you 300 grand and I get 12 and a half thousand pounds back. Yeah. It's not that attractive. So what might make it attractive is where Sandeep's going, is if you could leverage up with senior debt, you know, 60%, 70, 65, 70% of the initial cost, um, and we put in the equity portion, <coughs> that makes the amount invested substantially less and therefore potentially more attractive. On your figures, so you said that 550 is inclusive of bills. Yeah, that's right. So you would be covering the bills. Yeah, so if you look at the second sheet, there's a breakdown. I don't think you're lifting the value up enough on this personally, um, but you know, it, it's a good way to, and actually I, I echo the sentiment that's come earlier. I, I don't know if you really need to use us, to be honest. Um, if you were to refinance and get some deposit from your own home and get a normal mortgage, um, actually, you keep 100% of the profit. Right, OK. I, I found from HMOs that the sort of four bed is just about marginal, yeah. whether it works. As soon as you go five, six, seven, eight, it's nine, all, ten, it's all, profit, yeah. is all the six profit. Is and I, and I, would, I would definitely agree with that, that six yeah. is the magic could, number. Could you, could you do some sort of... I mean, is it a terraced or semi-detached? Could you do extension to make an extra couple you of You can bedrooms? extend. There's a lot of room to extend there. So is it so, worth looking at another project where you spend more to do that, but actually you then get a much higher revenue from it? This one I quite liked because you can extend out the back. Super. Thank you very much indeed. I like her very much. She's a very nice lady, and I think she's very bright, and I think she will get it right, but I'm not sure this is the right one. If you go through her costings, I think she's got all of the running costs. They're incorrect. So she's got council tax at £80 a month. I wish mine was. Yeah, wish mine was. <laughs> That's significantly lower than it should be. She hasn't got gardening costs on there, which you need to have as a HMO. So I think she is a lovely, lovely lady. I think she's come in very, very well prepared. Yep. You can tell that she's inexperienced, yep. which I'm not going to hold against her. No, nothing no. wrong with that. But, start somewhere. Yeah, we've all got to start somewhere. But I just think there's absolutely no money in it. The, the, the estate agent would have overvalued the exit um, valuation. I just genuinely think that she needs to be taking your advice and going for a six bedroom HMO. Sometimes if it's someone's first HMO deal, um, you know, you don't know what return they're happy with. Might not be good enough for us. No, but but, but a nice four, four rooms, you know, come on. You've got to start off with at least six and get going, otherwise you're going to be at it forever, aren't you? Yeah. You really are. But it's good to dip your toe in the water sometimes. Yeah, know? it is, but you dip your toe at six or, or, or you know, bring us, a, bring us a property that needs doing up. You're paying 150 for it, you're spending 40 yeah. on it, it's worth 250, 270 when it's done. Yeah. You know, bring something yeah. to us. She's not adding much value, can, is she really? No, she's not. A really nice, bog standard deal. Um, it's something that you do on your own. I mean, the trouble is, it's running as an HMO now and it's not hugely successful. Mm. So. No. Yeah. Where's well, the leap to yeah. well, the okay, 360 can, to 550? Nice. Yeah. I was just spending a lot of money for not a big uplifting yeah, rent surely, giver. She's going to pay the bills. But surely the advice we give her is to go back and buy it 40 grand cheaper. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you want to buy it, 
but you've got to buy them at the right money. And leverage our own finance. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, Geraldine, thank you for coming back in. I think this one is too small for me, I'm afraid. As I said, I think the four beds is the kind of cutoff for being profitable at all. I think you need a bigger one, five, six bed, well, probably six uh, or above if you want to get into some planning um, applications. But six is a nice safe bet that's profitable. You've got a good couple of rooms, clear profit there. Uh, so for that reason, I won't be investing, but thank you for coming in. Michelle? On your running costs, yeah. they are a little bit too low. Right. Okay. So <laughs> when I say a little bit, I mean quite a lot. So the council tax you've got in at 80 pounds a month, um, but it is significantly higher than that. Plus, also, you haven't got any gardening costs in there. So with a HMO, you need gardening, you need cleaning. Um, I think cleaning, actually, you, you've got £100 um, per month. I would say it's going to be slightly more than that. I think you will really make a success of yourself, but my advice has got to be just look into things a bit with a bit more detail. Okay but it's not something that I'll invest in. Um, uh, similar, I don't think there's uh, enough return. You know, I think you've done a great job coming presenting, you come across very well, and once you've got a few deals under your belt, you'll be really quite investable, I think. Um, but as I said earlier, I don't think you're giving enough uplift in value to this, you're not adding enough value to it. Um, and as a four bed, there's not enough margin in it. If you wanted to maybe do it yourself, using your money just to kind of try it. It's not going to be a great deal, but at least a deal. And you'd learn a lot by doing that. Um, unless you can add some rooms to it, I don't think there's much scope there for me personally, so I'm not going to be investing. As Simon said, that there's ways you can um, do it yourself and it would work. But to have other people invest with you, there's just not enough of an uplift in there to be of interest. Do you know the problem with the deal? Um, I think when I got here, I kind of started thinking it's too small and I should have had the other deal that I was. The problem with any deal that doesn't work is that you're paying too much for it in the first place. Yeah, that's true. So you need to go back, offer them 40,000 less, don't be embarrassed by doing so, offer them 40 grand less, see what they say. If you can get it for 30, 40,000 less, it will stack up for you. You need to fund your own house up a bit, put the money into that and get cracking. Yeah, brilliant. Sounds right. good to me. Well, good luck. Thank you. I'm a bit gutted with the way it went because I really was hoping to come here with a, get a deal, but I have received so much feedback from it. Um, I think, and I think that's the main thing. I guess that I kind of had in my mind that the fact that it would be a long-term investment and that they would be taking an income out of it would work, but actually it wasn't really going to work for them. So I really think that I've got to come back with a really big and sparkly and all sort of lights blazing a property so that they really want to invest. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by BFS. My name is John Howard and I've been investing and developing properties for over 40 years. In that time, I've been a very successful, but of course, I've always made the odd mistake as well. In my book, I explain how to be successful and what to do should something go wrong. I've survived three property recessions. I can help you do the same. My book is available online. Please go to johnhowardpropertyexpert.co.uk. Make your property finance easy with Bridging Finance Solutions. Our ethos is make it happen, and that's exactly what we do. We have many clients, from experienced property investors, developers and landlords, right through to people purchasing their very first investment property at auction. Bridging Finance Solutions is a principal lender, which means we have the freedom and flexibility to make immediate lending decisions. We bring years of experience with hundreds of satisfied clients. So if you're looking for fast finance from real people with a common sense approach, contact us today. Hello, my name's Simon Zucci. I'm the author of Property Magic, which you can buy on Amazon for $12.99 or indeed get on Audible if you prefer listening to books. Now I started investing in property in 1995 and I became financially independent by the age of 32. But I made a huge number of mistakes because I learned the hard way. You don't have to do that. 
I've explained in this book how you can make a huge amount of money investing in property when you know how to do it. And one of the secrets is working with motivated sellers, people for whom the speed and certainty of the sale is more important than the amount of money they get. And we look to find people who've got a problem and come up with an ethical win-win solution. I explain exactly how you do it in here. It's a bestseller. You could buy it online, as I said. However, you can get a complimentary copy. All you have to do is phone the number below or go to the website. I ask you just to pay for the postage, tell us where you want to send it in the UK and we'll send it completely free of charge to you. Call us right now and we'll send a book to you straight away. Learn how to invest with knowledge, invest with skill. Investing in property and building a portfolio can be easy with the right support and service. From property sourcing to selection and financing through to refurbishment, vetting and letting. Michelle Nizial's bespoke property investment service does all the hard work so you don't have to. Let Michelle take care of all the headaches while you relax and earn stress-free profit. Contact her now to find out how easy it really can be. I'm Nicholas Woolwork, businessman, investor, real estate developer and entrepreneur. In my book, Investing in International Real Estate for Dummies, I teach you specialist strategies you can use to build wealth and create an income through property and real estate investing anywhere in the world. I can steer you away from the common pitfalls and help you choose which investment strategy is right for you. This book will tell you all you need to know to grow a profitable real estate portfolio. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by BFS. Andrew, thank you very much for coming today to see us. Tell us a bit about yourself and what you are offering today, please. And I've been a full-time property investor for the last three years. In those three years, I've invested very heavily in my education, so I don't make the mistakes that other people make. In those three years, I've already signed three multi-million pound deals. Excellent. I'm here today looking for a partner, a JV partner, whether it's a 50-50 split or whatever option is the Property Angels works for you. It's an end of terrace house, 191 meters, so it's pretty large, and we can title split that into three flats, three bedrooms, one bedroom, and a two bedroom maisonette on the top. And that will net you around 290K within, within 18 months. Very simply, uh, the total spend will be what, about 1.4 million. From that, there will be about 580K net profit, which of a 50-50 JV will be 290 for the investor. And how much money are you looking for? Uh, 1.4 million to buy, tax, to build out, and then to flip within 18 months. What do you think the end GDV is going to be if you, if you want to sell them on? Very conservative, it will be 2 million. That's, that's as the split flats. As you that's right, exactly. Yeah. Title split for a flip. Yeah. A flip. One is to develop them and either sell them or you might be open to, some people might want to hold on to them. Well, I have a, the most profitable one would be to buy it now, convert it to service accommodation, run that for three or four years or five when the market bounces up, and then we can do the title split for a much bigger uplift at the end. Would you do the physical conversion split to three flats, but just not do the title split? Is that what you're saying? If we did the longer term view, we wouldn't even split them now. So it's currently basically an HMO in its current form, or it's a single No, it'll be a home. service accommodation following the Yorkshire model that we have. Okay, but what's it being used at now? This oh, right now, or it was a HMO. It was an HMO. And how many bedrooms? It's not a legal one. Okay, but how many bedrooms were, were in it? It's got five rentable bedrooms plus the caretaker. So actually, there are six bedrooms in there that we can. Why wasn't out. it legal? Just because the standards weren't up to spec. I think they just. It's been going for many years. And they didn't upgrade it. And they just never okay. applied. That's okay. what happened. Uh, how many rooms could you get out of it right now as an HMO? I didn't really look at that too much, but can definitely get seven or eight rooms. And what would you rent each HMO room out for? A minimum of 750 a month. There are lots, of, there, are lots there for 750 But you think it would be far more. more profitable as service accommodation? I believe it would be much more profitable as service accommodation. The challenge is obviously financing it. A service accommodation. Yeah, it's not serious and, defiance. And planning, I guess, is the other yeah. issue. You well, need there to are the ways planning. around that, actually. Okay. I found, actually, if I... Legal ways, we hope. <laughs> yes, of course. I do things legally. 
Uh, really, I only do the legal for the long term, that's all I do. Mm -hmm. But actually, I would recommend it to follow the Yorkshire model, which is actually one big house. And the rents there are hundreds of pounds, or we could even get 1,000 a night, potentially. And in Yorkshire, how much um, is the property valued at that you've got in, on the Yorkshire model? Two million? Yeah, there's four large properties. Whereabouts in Yorkshire? Scarborough. Sunny Scarborough. Scar yeah, sunny, sunny Scarborough, Scarborough by the sea. The sea. Not, I thought you could buy the whole place for, for uh, that much money in Scarborough, to be honest with you, and I've done a few deals up that way. Um, okay, so are we all... Sorry, I was just yeah. going to ask another couple of questions. Yep. So Quickly, please. the one in Scarborough, yep. it's two million. What is that rented out per room? Or what, well, what are you making? Per house, if you go on Air DNA, it averages out over seven, uh, 570 pounds a night. Okay. So, so you rent them out as the whole sure. house per the night? The whole house. We're so not I think doing, of Grandma's 70th we're not birthday. We're not doing the Scarborough deal, Michelle. No, I know, but I'm just asking for his experience and his background and whether it, how successful he's been. Well, clearly very. Mm. Okay, uh, Andrew, thank you very much. We'll now have a, a chat amongst ourselves and we'll, we'll be back to you shortly. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Speak to you soon. Thank you. There's one great thing about Andrew is that he comes from based in Cambridge and of course hopefully he's a Cambridge United fan uh, which will definitely um, Which means he's investable, right? Yeah. Which means saying? he's definitely investable. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we'll see. Well, he obviously does his research and his yeah. numbers. Yes. The fact is he's already got the Very model as well. Man. Very bright man. And he's done that, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if he's, just, he's, if he's overcomplicated with this serviced accommodation model, just on a, you know, if it's going to be worth two million, and it's going to cost him one point four, yeah. that's in itself not a bad project. Is he yeah. kind of overcomplicated yeah. with service I think, accommodation? I think what you find with very intelligent people uh, in the property industry, in my view, um, not being one of them clearly, um, <laughs> is and that's an honest opinion by the way of myself, is that um, they that they overanalyze, they're yeah. overanalytic, and they complicate it when it, property is a very simple business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know, if he's got three flats, he can convert into three flats. Yeah. And they stand him in at 1.4 million. He can sell them for two million pounds. You know, that's a reasonable. That's that, that, that's to deal, me, that's it? to me, that's, that's the deal. deal. Well, he, he's he's actually saying, isn't it? He was buying it for 800 odd thousand or 900 thousand, yeah. and then spending some money to convert it, and then uh, it'll be worth two million at the end. So that that in terms of a project is fairly. Yeah. Yeah, fairly yeah and the good. GDC was 1.4 million. So mm. there's 600 grand to make. Yeah. 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 But yeah. but I mean, he's spending. High, Half a million pounds on three flats. I mean, how, how big Well, it are depends. <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to clarify if he's factored in finance costs and that, or does he think if we're putting the money in, well, we, we cover it? We need to ask him those questions, don't we? That's so, I mean, to me, to me, we need to know what the, what was the square footage of the building. I think it says it's 191 square metres. What's that in English? 2,000 yeah. square, square feet. feet. So it's not massive, square but not feet. small. So even if, it, even if it was to cost in, in, in London, you know, 200 pounds a foot to do, not the normal 110 or whatever. So even so, you know, he's been, it sounds to me, as long as it's not a totally derelict, that he's actually being fairly sensible on that. The only issue though, is there is a person who lives there who has three cats. <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> Didn't read that but paragraph. But he has uh, lived there for a number of years. Is he assistant tenant? I don't know. We'd have to ask the question. Good point. Was Tommy the caretaker? Yes, and he's uh, given them loyal service. And he's lived there years. free. Yeah. So th these are, yeah. Well, yeah. Tommy will have to go, won't he? Finding Tommy a good home would be beneficial to the vendors. Mm. Andrew, welcome back. Uh, the first thing I need to ask you is, I hear you live in Cambridge. I do. I was a director of Cambridge United for 18 years, and I'm hoping you're going to tell me you're a Cambridge United supporter. I am. I will be. Fantastic. <laughs> That's a great answer. Right on, well sir. done. Right on. Super, yeah. right. I think okay. you found a partner. There you go. Okay, <laughs> so that's it. Deal done. Um, the things that I've got um, a few questions on um, with my moral compass is Tommy, the caretaker. We will look after him. Yeah, so my concerns are legally, um, where do we stand with um, him being in the property? So he's got any rights to the property? Actually, he doesn't, actually. Okay. Um, it's just been quite leave. a lot of emphasis on Tommy and his cats being yeah, in the property. I, I always like to do the right thing. Oh, and and Tommy knows to that he, he's potentially uh, going somewhere, being evicted. Yes, he knows. Yeah. What are you spending the money on for the refurb? Because as you're digging down to the basement, so could you talk us a little bit about that? It needs underpinning as well. That's wow. quite a big fee as well. But that's including, that's got a specialist underpinning. That's not like, hey, my... I can work out. Andrew, have you got a, a fixed price on the underpinning? 
from, from a specialist firm? Well, I, um, I can't remember the breakdown of all the 370K for the build. I rounded up to 400K. Yeah, but have you, got, have you got a, a fixed price from a yes. specialist firm you have? Okay. Yes, I do. And they're and giving a guarantee on it? Uh, yes. They are. Okay. But is there a basement already? And it just yes, there is. Further. It's just a little bit deeper, that's right. Okay. Okay. So it's so not a, it's not a complete dig, tricky. it's just a dropping it by. Correct. Would you, be, would you be okay with just doing this development and selling it? Yes. And going back to the HMO, because I never looked at it like that. When I said there was seven or eight rooms, actually that doesn't include the basement. You can definitely get two rooms down there. And there are a couple of large rooms that you can split into two. So it's probably 10 or 11. Does the 1.4 million include a cost of finance, Andrew? Or were you assuming that we'd put all the money in and charge it? How do we think about it? Basically that was a 50-50 JV. Yep. yep. Like that, so there was no cost of financing okay. there. Okay, one thing about the one thing about over the years with every development I've done with a backer or, or my own money, I've always valued my money or my mm -hmm. backer's money. Okay. So I've yeah. always put that in at an interest rate, okay. and I always give them that interest rate. At the moment, uh, I put all my borrowings in eight percent, so the deal has to work after that. So I'll need to add eight percent on top of that. I would. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. one hundred forty thousand. So that will mean 1.56 cost. And yeah. since the GDV is well over 2 million anyway, so it's still basically well, the same it, and stacks that's up. That's a very flippant, Andrew, it's a very flippant well over 2 million. Well, I, it's not really because I really mind it very down to 2 million. It should be actually 2.1 already. So it's a moving, it's a moving target, this is it, Andrew? But it not really, planning no. consent agreed, has it? Yeah. So it's subject to planning. <laughs> Correct. Could you buy it subject to plan, do you think, exchange with that? I've already mentioned that already. And they s the problem is it's a, motiv it's a motivated seller, so it's cheaper than what it should be already. Yeah. Yeah. And what is their motivation? Oh, it's in there. The, the motivation is the guy is very old. Could, yeah, but if you exchange contracts, you're pretty much committing. We could do that. And I've already mentioned that already, and I'm kind of open to that. I feel because the subject of planning, the planning's not, it's only if the investors want to get out very quickly, then the planning is an issue because the Lambeth Council are actually changing their guidelines. So we will get planning within two years at the latest. I can't so, wait two years, Andrew. Yeah. So, we could, so if you just want something short, well, we can do a sub, if you want to do a short deal only, then we can do a subject to planning, no problem. You think so? Yeah, I've already mentioned it with them. Worst case scenario, you just convert it back to a normal house. Always have an out before you have an in. Yeah, Always exactly. know what you're going to do if it goes wrong. Uh, we could do a pre-app, that takes a month for the council to come back on a pre-app and say what their advice is on planning and that's pretty, pretty straightforward and they're not likely to change their minds. So if they say yes, in principle, we would allow three flats in this subject to da da da, then you'll probably like to get it. Yes, I, I actually quite like it um, and I, I think uh, you know, given the subject of planning um, deals and the fact that it the backup position is something it already is, which is a house. I know it's not the avenue we want to go down, but as a fail-safe, um, I'd be quite interested in investing in this. Wonderful. OK, what's your offer? Subject to planning, if we can use bank finance as well, I'm quite happy to go with the terms that you've suggested. Oh, fantastic, yes. I think that there are people with a bit more expertise on this type of project than me, so I think you'd be better off with one of the other investors so I won't be investing in this one. I, I think it's a great deal. I, I'll come in, I'll, I'll do the whole thing. Exactly as was said. So using bank finance, I'll put all the money in for 50%. So that's my offer, but I'm saying actually, no, you that's guys are not prepared to that's do it. Fine. <laughs> that's my offer. Well, I think we've all highlighted that. I think for me as well, it needs the bank finance. It's yeah. not as interesting if you're putting up the whole 1.4 million. It's too expensive, there's not enough in it. No. Um, but subject to getting the maximum leverage possible uh, with the bank and putting in all the equity, I'd be interested at, at 50%. I'd be interested in, in uh, joint venturing it with you. Uh, it would be subject to planning permission. Uh, I don't want to share it with any of these other lot. <laughs> That's the first thing I'd say. Uh, and I will offer you 35% of the deal, not 50%. So 65-35. Yeah. Now you might ask why. The reason is so I've, got, the I've got more experience than the rest of the guys at, on this type of, this type of project. I've been, doing it, I've been doing it for 40 odd years, sold three and a half thousand properties like this, mm -hmm. converting. So um, you have a choice. 
you can either go with a lot of experience, you can go with some experience. Uh, that is entirely up to you. If I were you, I'd um, just have a little think about it now. I would share it, but I wouldn't drop the equity, the percentage. So if one of the other angels would like to share it, you could get two angels for the price of one, but it would be at a higher cost. By John, are you saying you only want 35%? No, I'm, I'm taking, I'm giving Andrew 35%. So you're taking 65%. Yeah. So therefore it's not the same cost. In fact, coming with, with a partnership between us would be better off for Andrew, really. Yeah. Well, o only if he thinks you've got enough experience to do the deal and, you're, and, and, and you'll make as much money as we will, as me and Andrew will out of it. And Over whatever you want to do, Andrew. Andrew, is called by us, basically. It's up right. to you. Thank you all. Thank not you very much for me. all your offers. And in fact, I'd, I'd love them all, actually. Got 50%. Uh, two ways or one way shared or you got 35 percent or three way all, all three sorry I'm sorry Don't rule that yeah, out. Sorry. Don't rule yeah. that out. if you'd all do all three together yeah yeah well, I could deal with that could be interesting it yeah. could be an interesting mm. one and um, 65 I think is too high yeah I think 65 is way too high personally are you well are you giving him advice now well you his agent no I'm just I'm just saying I think 50 percent is a much fairer deal you get what you pay for in life Simon you know that yeah, I do know that so Andrew what, what are you suggesting Come in the middle between 65 and 50. I can't do that. What can you do? I've made my offer. I think it's too high. Well, I'm still happy to do a deal with someone else if you got if someone wants to come in. At 50%, we can share it. It's up to you. I really would like to work with well, you. Let's, yeah. Let's, yeah. I was not let's slow down a moment. OK. What about 60%? He doesn't like 65. Would you accept 60%, 20% each? Well, hang on a minute. You've just changed the, the goalpost now. We've already what? done that bit. You know, that's the, the you know the, well, the horse has bolted. I'm doing it again. Twenty percent for three. Twenty percent per person. Per person. Twenty percent. Yeah, let's do that. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. I'm happy. So Great. Come and shake hands. Congratulations. Right? Done. I was in. I was out. I'm back in. <laughs> <laughs> he got the he got the strop on a bit, didn't he? Well done. Well, what a day. I came here looking for investor. No, I got much more than that. I got three investors and three new friends and mentors. This is an awesome day. And I'm really looking forward to working with them to make this project uh, very successful and to help the people of Clapham. Oh, I'm very grateful for John Howard's offer. It was very generous of him. Yeah, very generous, 65% for him, <laughs> only 35 for me. If he had come down a little, I'd have worked with him. However, looking, reflecting back on it, I've got three new investor buddies, three new mentors. And I think actually for the long run, that all I could actually work out much better for me. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by BFS. My name is John Howard and I've been investing and developing properties for over 40 years. In that time I've been a very successful but of course I've always made the odd mistake as well. In my book I explain how to be successful and what to do should something go wrong. I've survived three property recessions, I can help you do the same. My book is available online, please go to johnhowardpropertyexpert.co.uk Make your property finance easy with Bridging Finance Solutions. Our ethos is make it happen, and that's exactly what we do. We have many clients, from experienced property investors, developers and landlords, right through to people purchasing their very first investment property at auction. Bridging Finance Solutions is a principal lender, which means we have the freedom and flexibility to make immediate lending decisions. We bring years of experience with hundreds of satisfied clients. So if you're looking for fast finance from real people with a common sense approach, contact us today. Investing in property and building a portfolio can be easy with the right support and service. From property sourcing to selection and financing through to refurbishment, vetting and letting. Michelle Nizial's bespoke property investment service does all the hard work so you don't have to. 
Let Michelle take care of all the headaches while you relax and earn stress-free profit. Contact her now to find out how easy it really can be. I'm Nicholas Woolwork, businessman, investor, real estate developer and entrepreneur. In my book, Investing in International Real Estate for Dummies, I teach you specialist strategies you can use to build wealth and create an income through property and real estate investing anywhere in the world. I can steer you away from the common pitfalls and help you choose which investment strategy is right for you. This book will tell you all you need to know to grow a profitable real estate portfolio.